Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to our Sunday morning kids talks. I'm going to dive right into chatting about our truth challenge for Mark. And remember, we are busy in the book of Ephesians. Now, I quickly want to tell you something so cool. There's an awesome way to figure out where Ephesians is in the Bible. Okay? So, there's a little poem that says, Go eat popcorn. And so it says, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. And Ephesians is after... Galatians because go eat okay we take the first letter so that's a quick little poem to find out where the book of Ephesians is towards the end of the Bible okay because sometimes we can't find it so that's just a quick tip and I just want to say last week I asked you how many chapters are there in this awesome book and Jacques thanks for letting me know that there are six and also Paul wrote this book and guys, I know there are no wars and fighting and rescues and all that kind of stuff. But the awesome thing about this book is it's a letter that Paul wrote to the church telling us how to live life God's way. And at this time in the world, I think we're all needing how to learn how to live God's way better. Hey? So much going on around us. So don't give up. But what I want to say to you is this. I'm going to give you about two more weeks because there are only six chapters in the book of Ephesians and then I'd like to slot something extra in for March in our Truth Challenge as we build up to Easter. So keep reading the book of Ephesians. It's a lot to get through, a lot to understand, but don't give up because in the week or two I'm going to come at you with something new just before Easter. So that's our Truth Challenge, don't give up. And I hope that 2 Peter 3 verse 9 is going well. For you that memory verse and then i thought what we're going to do is we're going to just go and visit auntie anley um, and she's going to share with us why she loves reading the bible just to keep encouraging us not to give up reading now auntie anley sits at church in the front office when you come to church so she kind of knows all of us she answers the phone if you phone our church that's who auntie anley is and then we're going to take a drive to Victoria and she's going to help us remember what we're thinking about in our Bible stories over the next few weeks. So let's head along. I love reading the Bible because it is so full of life and exciting. It is God's truth and it is a love letter from our Heavenly Father. With the help of the Holy Spirit, He guides us to understand it and apply it in our daily lives. In this year, May you also experience this life-giving present from our Lord to read and enjoy it. The big question everyone is asking now is, why should we obey God? God made us, He loves us, and His plans are good. Oh, thanks Victoria. That's really a good reminder to remember to obey God all the time. So now, let's dive into our Bible story. Last week we had a look at Jonah and how he didn't obey God and how stuff went wrong until he learned to obey God and then he was happy. Now this week we're going to look at a new prophet's life, the, the prophet of Hosea. Now just a little bit of a background before we dive here. Hosea was, was a prophet for 40 years to northern Israel and he was asked to go and tell Israel that God hated their sin. It, he also needed to um, tell them that God was, had a message of love for them and it was a love that was never going to give up. So, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. What is that? Oh, sorry, sorry guys. I've just received such an exciting message. Okay, okay. Um, it appears that Morgan has met up with Hosea. So, so without further ado, Morgan, what's happening? I'm good. What are you doing? I was just looking for my wife there. So, oh, where is she? She ran away. I'm so sorry to hear that. Hello everyone, this is Hosea and he is the prophet of Israel. And I'm going to be asking him a few questions about what God sent him on. And what, what journey 
he went on. So, Jose, first question. What did God tell you to do? Well, God told me to marry Goma and have kids with her. Yes. But he also told me that he's not gonna she's not gonna love me. Oh, how many kids did you have? We have three kids. And their names are? Jezreel. Oh, which, that which that means you? that God is going to punish his people. Yes, and your daughter's name? Oh, yes, her name is No Mercy. That means that God's not going to have mercy on these people. Of the people of Israel? Yeah. And um, your other son's name? His name? Not God's people, right? Yes. I've heard. Yeah. Because yeah. Israel, yeah. The, the Israelites weren't um, the followers of God, right? They were not following his rules and his law and they didn't love him the way they that God meant for them to love him. That is right. Okay, well why did why did your wife run away? Why did your wife because run away? she was being a symbol of God's people. Of God's people keep keeping on not following his rules, not doing what he wants them to do and not loving him the way that he loves them. Right. Did you ever stop loving her? No ways! I would never stop loving Goma. Especially now that I know that God will never stop loving his people. That is awesome, Hosea. So the lesson of the story is that God always loves us. Whenever we run away or fade or drift away from him, he's always there for us no matter what. And he loves us unconditional, unconditionally. My goodness me! Isn't that a hectic story? That Hosea married a lady that was never ever going to love her, but he still loved her on and on and on and on. So the reason he did it was to make God happy. It's kind of like when your mom asks you to eat Brussels sprouts on your plate or something like, you know, gross. And um, you really don't want to, but you do. You obey her and you do what she's asking with a smile on your face because you know it's going to honor her and make her happy to do that. That unconditional kind of love is the love that God has for us, that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for us, paying the ultimate price so that our sins can all be forgiven, so that we can have a right relationship with God and we can live freely. So Hosea's life um, in marrying Gomar was a, a parallel. It was supposed to show us how we should be living. You know, I think it might have been easier just to give up, hey? Enough! I'm done! I don't want to marry this lady anymore. She never does anything kind for me. She always runs away from me. She doesn't love me. But Hosea's love was so strong, he kept, you know, one time he bought her back from a slave market when nobody wanted her. He bought her back. And so God used Hosea's love over and over again to show Israel that God has a love that never gives up. So, wow guys, imagine if our friends and our family and me and you obeyed God to that degree. Imagine that we loved God like that. And imagine that we loved others like Hosea loved Goma. What would our world look like? So we can learn something awesome from Hosea, the importance of obeying God, but the difference our life can make when we obey God. Well, guys, next week we're going to learn from a new prophets. So all the best with reading Ephesians and have an awesome week as you go to school and do the things you need to. Bye for now.